All right, what's going on, guys? It is Nick from Talk Interference Sports. I am here uh, to do an interview with Dean Blandino. Um, all of the crazy stuff going on in the sports world right now. Uh, figured I would reach out and try and get a um, officiating aspect of uh, what's going on um, in the the football leagues, at least. Um, Crazy um, event that happened uh, last week with the XFL with uh, the Roughnecks and the uh, Seattle Dragons. So um, I thought it would be cool to reach out with him and chat. But um, unfortunately, all of the future XFL games have been suspended or canceled until next year. So um, I'm, I'm just going to try and do the interview as if I was – um, going to be doing the interview as regular things were happening. Um, so I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, I'm going to just give him a call. Here we go. Can you guys hear me okay? Hey, Nick. Hey, Dean. How's it going? Good, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. Um, how, how's your day going? Been a crazy day for sports. Yeah, yeah, it's a crazy, uh, obviously it's a crazy time with everything that's going on. Um, thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule and joining me amidst the chaos, obviously. Um, yeah, I just just want to ask you one thing about it, and um, uh, we won't you know, talk about the coronavirus a whole bunch today I, I, that's not why i wanted to talk to you but i just sure. wanted i just wanted to know what your thoughts of uh um the whole sports world suspending player canceling games and and what do you think it means for the xfl going on for the uh the next season yeah i think obviously you know i'm certainly not an expert but based on everything that i've read and i've heard that this is you know we're erring on the side of caution and and this is these are prudent measures and, uh, you know, just limiting large gatherings. But, it, but it's a shock, right? It's a shock to the system. We're so used to having sports as, as an outlet. And, you know, whether it's, whether it's baseball or basketball or the NCAA tournament and, and the, the XFL now. And, uh, and so I think it's something that, that is going to be a, a pretty significant um, change for people. But it's, it's obviously necessary and, and, and the health and safety of of everyone is, is more important than, than playing these games. But I don't think that, you know, the XFL is, is, you know, they're, they're going to play a, they're going to play a second season in 2021. We'll see, we'll see what happens this year and how we finish up. But obviously there's, there's things that are out of our control at this point. Yeah. So um, that's crazy. But, uh, you know, like you said, ultimately everybody's health is more important. So, uh, We'll, yeah. see, we'll see what happens with just sports in general within the next few weeks or months to come. Sure. Um, in case anyone who uh, isn't listening and doesn't know who you are or what you do, can you give me a brief summary? Sure. Yeah, so I'm um, you know, current, current rules analyst for Fox Sports. I do NCAA, NFL football, and, and XFL football. I, I was the senior vice president for officiating for the NFL for – for four years and worked at the NFL uh, for over 20 years in different in different capacities in in the officiating department and uh, I'm also the uh, the national director of instant replay for the NCAA. Okay, all right. Um, so what was your ties with with the XFL? You're you're just um just with Fox broadcasting. I thought I, I read that you were doing the the head of officiating for the XFL. Yeah, so it's actually twofold. So I work with the XFL on the Fox side, on the broadcast side, helping out on the telecast. But also, I'm I'm in charge of their officiating department, put together their officiating staff, evaluate, train, and uh, and so I've been working with the XFL in that capacity for uh, for a while now. Okay, so how was the transition from NFL officiating to XFL officiating with with how unorthodox? the XFL rules and like time clock or the play clock is and stuff like that. Yeah, it was, a, it was a transition. XFL rules are, are based in NFL rules. So probably 90% of the rules are the same in the XFL as they are in the NFL, but with changes, obviously you mentioned the clock, the kickoff is different. 
and so that was definitely it was interesting and exciting for me to to kind of take on a new challenge and look at a different set of rules and try to incorporate those into the game and get and get our officiating staff up to speed on these rules so it was uh it was exciting it's been a, it's been a lot of fun and it, it's been an interesting uh it's been an interesting experience it's it's awesome to watch man i'm i'm i really like the rules and, and i'm wondering how long it took you to study these new rules to to feel that you're up to speed to taking on that task yeah no question there's it's uh it's been like for me it's always like i love to study the rules i love to do different things related to the rules so it was a it was a challenge but i i really relished it and it took me a little bit a couple months before the season to kind of get everything down pat because i needed to learn it so that i could teach it to our officials and and that was a big thing for me and uh and you know you're still learning and i, I still learn every time i watch an nfl game or a college game i learn something and certainly the xfl having only played five weeks uh, i'm learning something you know feels like every other play that's that's awesome. I really like that. What what is the process in hand picking who is in the officiating crew and how is it determined what games someone will be officiating? Yeah, so we looked at we looked at all Division One college uh, football officials. So that's where the XFL officials come from, different conferences, and uh, and we looked at we try to put together a staff of a combination of veteran officials. And also younger officials, kind of up and coming officials. So to get a good mix of veterans and less experienced officials, but also looked at, you know, a, a diverse group of officials. And uh, and so all of our officials are have been working in Division One. They're from different conferences. They're from different backgrounds. And uh, and you know that was important to us to put together a, a, a an inclusive staff and and a mix of both veteran officials, but also officials that are that are earlier in their career but have a lot of upside okay all right um can you tell me a little bit about your start into officiating and how how you got into your previous position with the nfl as vp of officiating yeah i i started i played football in high school and and wanted to continue to be involved in the sport i love sports played baseball and basketball and everything hockey and uh, I knew I wanted to get involved in sports in some way. So when I when I graduated from from college, I, I sent my resume to the NFL, and, and not knowing what you know what would come of it, but they they called and, and they had a couple of internships open, and one of them was in officiating, and I and I interviewed for that position, and they offered me the job, and I I took it because I wanted to be involved in the NFL, and then I learned about officiating as an intern and then they hired me full time and it just it just went from there i was able to i was blessed to be surrounded by good people that took an interest in in my career and helped me learn and 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 it just um over the course of 15 16 years i learned so much and eventually became the uh the head of the department how hard is it to um so one season you'll have all of these rules and then uh people get together and then change some of the rules how hard is it yeah. to to depict on uh, whether or not this um, rule change, um, how do I say it? How hard is it to uh, make sure that this rule change is implemented and you don't fall back on the season prior? Yeah, it's, you know, I've always looked at rules changes that when, when they're necessary, you have to make a change. But I don't think it's great for the game to have a, a whole bunch of rule change, rules changes every year because it changes the game. Officials have to have to get used to it. Players, coaches have to get used to it. There's a learning curve, and uh, and so there is a, a transition and a challenge every time a rule changes and something new is implemented um, or something is taken out of the game. And uh, and so it's something that we take very seriously. I've been involved in the NFL rules change process. I'm currently involved in the NCAA rules process. And uh, we don't we don't like to make a whole bunch of changes every year because again it's just you know there's a transition and a learning curve involved. I really love the XFL's broadcasting coverage of the officiating crew. Now, yeah. like they're talking uh, through how the plays uh, happen and how they explain what the rule is and uh, why it should or shouldn't be overturned. What do you think about the transparency that they've shown with the officiating? And is it something that other sports or other leagues will look at and maybe look to implement? 
I, I think it's been great for the XFL. I think it's something that fans really enjoy. And anytime you can, you can kind of peel the curtain back and let people see what actually goes on. It, it eliminates, you know, it eliminates that, that doubt as to how the process is, is being, you know, is being handled. And, and I think it's been a positive overall um, for the XFL. And I think other leagues are looking at it. I think the NFL is looking at it. Uh, the NCAA is looking at it. I don't know if they'll implement it um, at any point, but it's certainly something that they're considering because it does eliminate a lot of the doubt or a lot of the, you know, you have people that think there's, you know, a conspiracy that they're out to get my team. And when you watch it and you see someone that is just like you and me, that's working through a process, it, it kind of eliminates any of that negativity surrounding it. Right. I mean, in that way, you can see how the conversation went down, whether, uh, you know, whether it be right or wrong, at least you could see where they came to conclusion A from from B. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And I think that 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 helps people understand the process. It it, it, it you you come away with less questions um, when you can hear and see what actually is happening. Um. So, how does how does the Xbox controllers work with with the? I, I I'm so curious the Xbox controllers. How does that work? You just rewind yeah. it with that. Yeah, that's you know something we we started doing that with the NFL. Oof, this probably goes back probably ten years, and we have we have editing software and video software where we can run video back and forth. And and uh, you know before then it was it was a you know coach's clicker, also also called the cowboy remote, where you had a remote that had different buttons, play, fast forward, rewind, and we got together and decided you know the NFL. IT group decided, hey, let's see if we can if we can program a, a, an Xbox remote that people are used to using um, to manipulate the video, and they were able to do it. And and just like you play um, on your Xbox with you know the the remote control and uh, and do different things, now you can run the video back and forth, and different different parts of the controller are you know assigned to different tasks, and and, and it actually. It becomes very intuitive, and you don't even have to think about it um, when you're running the video using that that Xbox remote. That's actually really cool. I, I had no idea until they showed, you know, the the clips, and I saw this guy using yeah. the Xbox controller. I was like, wow, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, so I gotta ask um, the situation between the Dragons and the Roughnecks last week. Yeah. What happened, and what brought the response of the XFL? Um, they came out with a statement, and um, seems that they had released the uh, the statement and then let go of the officiator or the official who was uh, in charge of that game. Yeah, you know, unfortunately, there there's protocols in place uh, at the end of the game, at the end of the half, and and we just didn't follow those protocols, and it led to a mistake occurring where we should have put time back on the clock, and we didn't. And it's just, you know, it's a learning experience. And, you know, there was a breakdown in communication. There was a breakdown in, in following the protocol. And, uh, and I thought, you know, we got together and the XFL put that statement out that, look, th there was a mistake. We owned up to it. And, uh, and there's not, you know, there's not much more than that. We did, you know, the officiating supervisor who it's not just on the officiating supervisor. There were a lot of layers there. Right. Um, and, and he was, you know, he was reassigned. He was not let go. You know, he was reassigned to, to, to do some other things other than go to games. But, okay. um, you know, it was just one of those things where there's protocols in place and when there's a breakdown in protocol and we don't follow the process, then sometimes things like that can happen. We want to avoid them, but that was a situation where we just, uh, you know, we didn't follow the right, the right process. How many different scenarios do you look at when that mistake happens that you would go through, um, say, let's just replay the down or the dragons and, and the roughnecks are playing again in week 10. Can yeah, we just yeah. take, take and have them play the two seconds when they meet up again? How many of those measures do you guys look at before coming to a final conclusion? I think all of it, you look at all options and you, and you just weigh the options and you try to you try to come up with the best solution. And, and obviously it's a, it's not a it's not a great situation, and you're trying to mitigate the you know the all the things surrounding it, and uh, and so yeah, you look at the two teams are playing again in week ten. Do we play you know bring them out and have it all set up and play you know at least that one more play from you know at that point, 
all things are on the table. And obviously, um, you know, what's taken place since then has kind of superseded the, the issue from last week. But right. I think once we, we resume games and, and those types of things, I think that it's, it's all, it's all on the table. Right. Okay. I like that answer. I, I, I really like the transparency that the XFL is having with all of this. And I didn't see any kind of negative response from them owning up to what happened. And, and I think that's really awesome of them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Agreed. What is your opinion on the uh, New Orleans Saints and, and Rams no call that happened in the NFC Championship? And what are your thoughts on the rule change that they implemented with the booth review as a response? Yeah, I think obviously that's that was a you know it was a missed call and, and it was a big situation and, and you hate to see that you hate to see a game um, you know not necessarily be decided by that call but certainly impacted significantly by it. And, uh, you know, the league took the step to, to implement a rule change to allow for pass interference to be reviewable. And, uh, and I think we saw, we saw some growing pains with that rule and how it was applied during the season. And, uh, and it was, they, were, they were smart in that they implemented for just one year so they could test it and, and see how it went. And I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens for the 2020 season if they – if they re, you know propose it again, if they get rid of it all together, um, but again, I think it's really hard when you have those subjective calls like pass interference and holding, where it's not just it's not just did the ball hit the ground or or did the player step out of bounds. It's you know did that contact significantly affect the receiver's ability to make a play on the ball? That's very subjective, and when you make that reviewable, it's really really hard to uh to be consistent i think we saw that play out last year yeah absolutely uh i felt like there was a lot of inconsistencies with with the the review on on the uh pass interference so it'll be interesting to see how how they go about it next year um i just got a couple more questions for you Uh, i had a lot regarding what was to come of the later part portion of the season but sure. I, you know, I'll hold off and and maybe I can get you on and we can talk about that some other time. But yeah. we'll we'll hold off on that for now. But I just got a couple more questions for you. What do you think the craziest missed call that you'd ever seen was? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, you know, certainly the certainly the Saints Rams play was. I mean, that's fresh. It's recent. So that that's certainly going to be up there. I, I think. You know, there were – it goes back for me. The, the most impactful missed call that I've been a part of was the um, – it goes back to the 1998 season, and it was the – and it was a down play. The Jets were behind, and uh, Benny Testaverde was the quarterback. He, he, he ran a QB sneak, got tackled um, short of the goal line, but the officials ruled touchdown, and, uh, and the Jets won the game. The Seahawks ended up not making the playoffs. The coaching staff ended up getting fired, and that was probably one of the one of the plays that ultimately led to instant replay coming back to the NFL in 1999. So to me, that was probably the the most impactful missed call that I've that I've been a part of. Okay, that's yeah, that's a pretty big one. <laughs> um, so you have your own podcast. It's called Good Calls. It's yeah. an awesome podcast. I like listening to it. Can you tell us where we find can we where we can find it and where you came up with the idea for it? Yeah, you can listen to it on on it's iHeart iHeart Radio and um, Apple Podcasts anywhere you that you can do it's on. We uh, you know we had started talking to the people at iHeart about doing a weekly podcast involving rules. And, football and and uh and yeah i jumped at it it's been a lot of fun it's been it's been interesting and uh yeah we do it every week and you know now now with uh not a lot of sports going on we kind of branch out to to make some rules in everyday life and and things that that don't involve sports but once you know once the nfl comes back we kind of focus on that but it's been it's been a lot of fun all right. Um, is there any other projects that you've uh, been doing that you'd like to share with us? I saw you're doing stand-up. 
you know, I used to do stand-up comedy. I haven't done it in a, in a long time. That was something I did probably 15 years ago. And uh, but yeah, I, I you know I just focus on like I do my Fox stuff. I work with the NCA, the XFL, and, and really focus in those areas, the podcast, and that keeps me keeps me pretty busy. All right. Um, I absolutely loved having this conversation with you, Dean. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to do this with me. Like I said, I had a bunch of questions about what could happen later down the, sure. down the, sure. the road, but uh, hopefully we can stay in touch and, and do this again uh, maybe next year if the season doesn't yeah. start over again. Absolutely. I'd love that. All right. Well, Dean, you take care. Thank you for your time. All right, Nick. Take care. All right. Bye. bye. Dean Blandino, everybody. It was awesome. Good stuff. Go check out his podcast. Um, he's a really funny guy. Uh, awesome. Uh, I, I like the transparency that the XFL had, and he's a huge part of um, why it is the way that it is. Um, good stuff today. Um, guys, stay safe out there. Uh, have a great day. And uh, I'll keep trying to get more player interviews and – and interviews going while there are no sports. So we can at least still talk about sports because, I mean, that's what I like doing. And, and if there are no sports to to watch, then why not talk to players or talk to coaches and stuff like that? So, all right, guys, thanks for joining. Take care.